All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, a healthy lifestyle publication reports that like other areas of the body, your mouth <laughs> themes with bacteria, mostly harmless. But your mouth is the entry point to your digestive and respiratory tract, and some of these bacteria can cause disease. Normally, the body's natural defenses and good oral health care, such as daily brushing and flossing, keeps the bacteria under control. However, without proper oral hygiene, bacteria can reach um, levels that might lead to oral infection, such as tooth decay and gum disease. So we're asking, how do you take care of your oral health? And, you know, and those other things... <laughs> Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 Let me just confess. It's not every time I brush twice a day. I know I'm a terrible example. <laughs> but I don't know. But I notice, though, that every time I brush my teeth morning, then I brush it last thing at night before going to bed. I wake up very fresh. And again, I wake up like, you know... Sometimes, I don't know, I even have like a headache or something, you know, without brushing. But I don't know whether it's my, my mind that is playing a trick on me. But I, but I notice that I'm happier and more excited every time, you know, I make that effort, even however tired I am, to just brush my teeth in the, in, at night before sleeping. Let's just be confessing our, <laughs> our sins. sins. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm, I'm very lucky. I've not had toothache before the way I hear people say they've had toothache but sometimes I'll have this pain in my gum and I'll just sleep over it then I'll feel fine so constantly I'm procrastinating I'll go ahead and get it checked okay. and it's almost three years now and one thing too I notice is sometimes too when I brush I probably bleed a little like frequently I'll bleed a little it's a good so, thing we have doctor so here. thank god we have we have doctor <laughs> but let me come to you Noma how is your oral hygiene? How do you take care of your... I think I try. Let me put it that way. I brush, not twice a day, every day. Because there are those days you just need a bed, right? <laughs> yeah. But I, I think I do... Uh, I try to do a good job. And then I have had several dental appointments... And uh, my doctors have said, oh, you're doing a good job. I know the last time I had a little bit of sensitivity to the teeth, and um, especially when they were trying to clean, and I complained about that. And they did give me a different kind of toothpaste to use. And then after a while, it, it went. So all in all, I intend for my teeth to be complete till when I'm ce celebrating my 90th birthday. <laughs> so passion for <laughs> dentistry. Unparalleled customer service and a transformative vision are what propelled Dr. Amy from operating a small dental practice less than 10 years ago to becoming Nigeria's largest and most successful dental practice today, Smile360. And Smile360 has branches in Lagos and Abuja and leading an organization of over 90 highly skilled dentists, nurses, hygienists, and support staff, Dr. Amy and the Smile 6, um, 360 team have become recognized for their cutting-edge technology, state-of-the-art surroundings, and advanced dental proceedings. You see that always. We always bring the best. And she's joined us. She's a friend of the house, by the way. So all these things that we're confessing, mm -hmm. she will answer us. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doc, for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You know, every time we talk about dental, we, we say we'll go and see the dentist. But I think it's just a bad habit. Nigerians just wait until they have one pain or the other. Right? And it was World Her um, Oral Health Day. Unfortunately, you could not join us then, but we are here now and all of that. Um, how important? Because, again, people really, they really pay attention to... Um, the um, teeth. I mean, if you feel a fever, you quickly run to your doctor. If you're feeling stomach ache and all of that. But with oral hygiene, not many people understand how it balances your overall health. Yeah. You know, maybe you should help us explain how important is your oral health to your overall, overall health. Body. Yes. You know, I love that. Well, thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> and of course, every 20th of March is World Oral Health Day. And we're still within the 30 days. Yes. So, yeah, <laughs> we're let's, good. Let's celebrate that. <laughs> So, of course, uh, a lot of people think about going to the dentist only when they have that tooth 
ache. And unfortunately, when you get to that stage is more time, more work, more money, and more discomfort. I don't want to mention the word pain. But really, why are we not going to the dentist earlier, right? The last patient I saw came in, I was like, okay, I was told to come for a check. What is this check all about? And then, of course, he had some calculus. We had some, a cleaning done. And he was not even aware that he had calculus, you know, behind, yeah, because it settles mainly behind the teeth. And there was also tooth decay that was beginning, you know, to settle on, on his molars. And we were so glad that we captured it while it was still little. Early. Because, yes, when it's, lit, it's, it's really early, there is no pain. There is no discomfort. At most, when it progresses, you could start feeling sensations when you're eating something sweet or acidic. You know, Neoma talked about sensitivity, yes. And most people think, okay, this is just happening now. Let me wait. It's got to go, you know. And if you're lucky, it's sens the sensitivity stops or the pain. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't progress because the tooth decay is an infection. Mm. An infection that you have in your mm. body, once it begins, Millions of bacteria, nothing can stop it if you don't go to the dentist. So really, an infection in your mouth is connected to every single aspect of your body and the bacteria could go and log in into your, your heart, you know, your, yes, your, your lungs, and even, you know, in, make your diabetes situation, for example, if you're diabetes, um, even worse. So it's important to know that that decay could lead to something even bigger in your overall body. So yes, a healthy mouth is important for a healthy body. Mm. Ewo. <laughs> Ewo. <laughs> um, so I would like to find out, um, so what are the early signs? I, okay, let me use myself now. So for the fact, I've, sometimes I'll feel pain and for months I will not feel pain. So I feel like maybe it's just one of those things in your body. Do you think maybe there is actually an issue going on there? Because since there is that gap, sometimes four, six months, I will no longer feel the pain. So I just feel like, well, mm. it's not something serious. Mm. How often should we probably go check, have a tooth um, check, or should we just wait till maybe when there is really a serious pain? Okay. Just like people go on routine annual checks to the hospital, should we do that too for our tooth? Yes, thank you very much for that. I think it's even more important for your oral health that you go for those periodic check because it doesn't hurt when it's at that little stage. And as I said, if you wait until you start feeling something, it's probably too late because unlike a wound on your skin, you know, you can heal that back. But anything that happens in your mouth, you don't get it back. Mm, right? That's why they say that the tooth is like diamonds, right? I wonder if you, mm. you lose that chip, it's gone. Yes, it's gone forever, right? So what you want to do is really those periodic check. But let's not talk about tooth decay. We'll talk about gum disease. You talk about gum bleeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can talk about that again. Um, but there's one thing that, you know, we need to know is oral cancer. Mm. And that is something that mm. is not, if you can detect it so easily by going, you know, with, for your periodic check. And it's something that we can also take care of really at that early stage before it disseminates in our body. And it's something that is Prevenant. most of the time ignored, you know. Of course, if you have certain habits such as smoking and, you know, um, you are more prone to having that. But it's something that is real. And I'm here as a health professional. I've been in this profession for 30 years to be able to tell you that these things are there and we see them. So don't wait, please until, you know, it gone too far. So, Noma, I'll come to you for a minute. Just give me a second. I want you to stay on this oral cancer yes. matter again, yes. just for a bit. Mm -hmm. How do you know, you know, that this is just, or this is maybe like, you know, the, like symptoms mm -hmm. of oral cancer? How would you know that? All right, so for you, of course, if there's a lesion in your mouth, in your oral cavity, on the inside of your cheeks, on your tongue, on the floor of your mouth, or you know, the, the roof of your mouth, the palate, and you realize that that lesion may not be even painful. And that's the, the funny part, right? But it's there for several weeks, maybe several months, right? It might be growing or not. You should go to the dentist, right? But when you go for your periodic check, the dentist actually looks at the teeth, the gum, but also looks at around your mouth to see if there are no lesions of such 
that we can see. And sometimes we do biopsy to be able to say, oh, thank God this was nothing to worry about. Or sometimes we're able to actually detect, detect it. So it. The, the, the routine checks that um, Glory asked now, we're look, looking at once every quarter? Every six months, yeah. Okay, once yes. every, okay. Six every six months. Okay. Every six months. Every six months minimum. Some people uh, that have gum problem, we ask them to come a bit, you know, every three Fruit, months, yeah. they're about. So yeah. every quarter they come Every in. quarter. Okay, Norma, please come in. All right, uh, Dr. Amy, wow, that was, um, you gave us reason. In fact, the moment you said tooth decay is an infection, I said that, that, that made me sit up <laughs> because I know what infections do generally when somebody's running a fever or a child is running a fever, Correct. you know that there's an infection somewhere. So I wanted to ask that apart from brushing and flossing and basic hygiene that we carry out, what other uh, hygiene uh advice would you have for somebody just to to be able to just daily care for their tooth and also um for those who have like sensitive teeth what kind of toothbrushes or toothpaste i mean i know they have the sensitive uh toothpaste but what kind of brushes because sometimes you might want to get something hard, even though you don't smoke, but just for yeah. cleaning purposes or just to make sure that your teeth is clean and you want to brush and brush. Yes. But sometimes you also find out that that damages. So what kind Correct. of tooth? Because I don't particularly subscribe to too soft to uh, toothbrushes. They, mm -hmm. I feel that they don't do anything. So what's your advice? <laughs> Auntie, uh, why you wash it? <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Thank you for that. So I could tell you, well, you said it all. Brushing, very important, at least twice a day. Uh, flossing, very important. We also have those, what we call, interproximal toothbrushes that do even better than flossing. So I think it's, your dentist can show you how to, how to use these brushes even better. But definitely, there is a fact that when you have sensitive teeth, your dentist will be able to tell you why your teeth are sensitive, you know. What's your diet? Because you see, what goes in, you know, reflects in, in your mouth. So if you're taking a lot of acidic fruits, you know, you want to watch that. So sensitivity could be due to even the position of your teeth, what you eat, how you brush, of course, as you said it. Don't use toothbrushes that are too hard. I will go with soft. Now we even have extra soft just to tell you that you don't need hard toothbrushes. Medium, if you feel like you want to feel the bristles, but to be honest, if you have a soft toothbrush, you know, you're good. It will, it will get the job done. And you have a good technique, yes. And you go over your gums and teeth. Go over your gums and teeth when you're brushing. It's so important, I will remember, to brush our gums. Gum and teeth. Yes. Okay, we'll Always. take a okay. break. Yes. Gum. I have, I have one hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, hold please. On. <laughs> Let's take a very short break. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing how to take care of our oral health and we have with us Dr. Amy. Now please let's hear what you have to say. Remember you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with hashtag Wayshow. All right, so Norma, you had a follow-up question and I have a question for Doctor, then I'll come to you, Glory. Okay. Yes, I did. So Dr. Amy, I wanted to find out um, about dry mouth. Now people who experience dry mouth, what could possibly be the cause of having a dry mouth and that does it also um the, is it part of what makes them to have a mouth odor and then i wanted to also find out if uh, dental x-rays are safe and if they're needed all right thank you Nirma. <laughs> <laughs> we came so, for you today. <laughs> yes, it's ready. She's, she's really done quite a bit of research. So, Neoma, definitely dry mouth. I think there's no better time to talk about that because we have the Lent season, people are fasting. We have the Ramadan where people are fasting. So we know that most of the time during the day, you know, those who are fasting will be having a dry mouth. And of course, if there's less um, liquid intake, saliva, is there's less circulation of saliva, you tend to have a dry mouth. And the mouth could actually not have a fresh breath, okay? So we are prone to having 
a bit of, you know, halitosis is what we do, the, the, the technical word for it. So um, you want to make sure they hydrate whenever you're able to, to drink quite, quite a bit. And the other source, uh, apart from when you're fasting, of having dry mouth is when you're having some medication. I'm very allergic, for example, I take all this anti you know, I take it at night, but I know throughout the day the effect is there. You're taking certain form of antibiotics, that, that could also lead to dry mouth. So you will tend to be prone to having halitosis, you know, if you're having some of this medication. I mean, some other conditions, general condition, if you're a diabetic patient, you know, you, you could because of the diabetes or because of the medication you are taking, having a dry mouth. A dry mouth equals, you know, um, a, an issue, not having mm -hmm. a fresh breath, okay? So, so, so um, when you are dehydrated, right? So that, that can cause, um, what's it called? The halitosis. The halitosis, or, yes. Yeah. But it's really because your salivary glands are not, are not you know, functioning optimally. functioning optimally or producing enough saliva. Mm. So any situation that you know, uh, because you already also have people who are mouth breathers. I see a lot of children because they have problem with their sinuses or, you know, they can't breathe. They breathe so through they the mouth. mouth yeah. And the parents are like, I don't understand why my child uh, is not having a fresh breath. Hmm. But it's really because he breathes through the mouth and the mouth is dry. So as soon as you have a dry mouth, less saliva, you are prone to having, you know, um, not having a fresh breath. But you also are prone to more gum disease, you know, your gums bleeding more, prone to having more tooth decay because the saliva has a function hmm. in washing our teeth and protecting our teeth and gums. So if you gargle, would it help? For instance, for those that are fasting, mm -hmm. right? So in between your fasting, you know, you can't take water, but at least you can just put in the water, gargle and spit it out. Would it help? Is that works for, yes. Okay, that, it will that help. Will so she talked about x-rays, safety yes. of x-rays. Safety of x-ray, thanks for, for bringing that up. X-rays are much safer now than ever because uh, radiology is now digital, all right? So the exposure has one in, divided by 20 or more, right? So now that we have digital x-rays, we could tell you that in some dental offices in, in the state, for example, the dental x-ray um, is actually in the middle of the reception, you know, mm -hmm. just to tell you that they don't really put so many screens and protection and lead because the radiation is so minimal, all right? So I will tell you that it's something that we need to be protected, especially around the thyroids and all that, but the radiation has really been, you know, dramatically reduced and less risk. Okay, so speaking to mouth odor, even though you have, I don't know your, your medical terminology. <laughs> so um, we noticed that, um, I noticed that, you know, some people, they, would I say produce more, the tonsil stones or whatever it is it's called, mm. you know. And if you notice that tonsil stone, when you're able to brush and it comes off, it comes out of your mouth, is that yellowish thick thing like mm. a brown, mm -hmm. you know, when you, when you smell it, it, it has a foul smell, Correct. right? So how, first of all, what causes tonsil stones? Because, I mean, someone called me and said, you know, that they needed to go and do surgery to remove tonsils stones. I said, ah, mm. in Nigeria, I never heard that one before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but, I mean, she's abroad. So what causes tonsil stones and how can we better manage it? Because I know that the more the stones gather, yeah. the more you have bad breath. Correct. Yeah, so correct. how do we correct that? Thanks for bringing that up because, you know, we need to be able to connect the mouth with the rest yeah. of the body, right? So while you have bad breath, it could, something, it could be due to something that you, you, you have you know, you have problem in your, in your stomach, you know, just to use basic terms, right? You could have problems in your upper, you know, um, airways as well. So while the dentist, you know, looks at the mouth, you know that there's an ENT that should be involved. There's a, a gastroenterologue also, the people who are in charge of the, the, of the stomach yeah. who also could come to detect that that's the cause of the, the bad breath, right? Mm -hmm. And not necessarily, you know. So I probably will ask an ENT colleague to be able to speak more in detail Into that. About, about that, okay. you know, because it goes beyond the oral cavity, mm. you know. It goes beyond the oral cavity. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. So I've had people say um, they have weak tooth and they cannot chew hard stuff but I don't really get that. 
what mm. does that mean? Okay, okay. All right, so two things. It could come from the fact that the teeth are also uh, have weak enamel, you know, have people who are brushing like kings three times a day, are flossing like bosses, you know, every that time. No mother is looking and, for hard brush. And using <laughs> mouthwashes. Let's not forget mouthwashes, you know. And at the end of the day, we have enamels that are chipping away from their teeth, but that's due to how, you know, the enamel was formed and was weak during the, 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 the formation of the tooth. So nothing that they have caused is just sometimes hereditary um, factors. But there's also another aspect where someone could say, I can't chew because his muscles are really weak, you know, or he gets really tired after a really uh, a little time after chewing. But that is really due to the fact that maybe while he's sleeping, he's actually clenching. You know, there's so mm. much pressure in his teeth, uh, you know, and so much pressure in his muscles that he's not able to chew for a long time because the muscles really get tired. So now is an opportunity for me to speak about stress and how stress affects your oral health, mm. all right? So if you're stressed, there's an impact on your muscles, an impact on your tongue, an impact in the joints between the jaws, and that could lead to even much more in your ears, in your balance, in your neck, in your back. And I've had to see a patient one day who was like, I'm going to have surgery on my back. And I said, wait a minute, what's the problem? Oh, I do hear some sounds in my ear, I have tension in my neck and back, and my doctor said, I said, let's try something. You know, and we gave him an appliance, okay, an oral appliance that just changed his life. Nothing invasive, and he was able to sleep like a baby, wake up energized, and all the tension in his body gone. And that's for somebody who was taking a really heavy analgesic for many, many years. Wow. Right? So, again, a dentist, hmm. you know, is the person who can take care of diagnosing certain things even before you go deep into surgery. So don't minimize the role of a dentist. Ah, you're overlooked, though. Uh -uh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so before we go, I cannot not but talk about kissing. Because me, I'm not a fan of, uh, <laughs> you know. Um, how do you, especially when you want to maintain a love relationship with your partner and, you know, bad breath and all of that. So how do you... How do you manage it? And really, is this kissing, especially this deep throat wanting, wanting that they are putting saliva <laughs> mixture, how safe is those, are those things? <laughs> Doctor, you have well, to talk about it. No, kissing. we have to talk about it. And this, is, this is real, right? So we'll talk about well, bad breath. We'll talk about socially, mm. the power of a smile. Look at the smiles yeah. here, you know? And the smile, mm. you know, has power, whether it's at, at the personal level or at the professional level. You know, you can use your smile to, to change the world and the smile can take you miles away Absolutely. you know in, in, in your profession as well so let's not neglect that so of course in a relationship oral health is at the center of that relationship you know I had people saying look um, I can't go forward with, with in this relation you know and they trick the fiance to come to the, the, the clinic you know by saying okay we're having a couple just like a couple massage or having a couple clinic really because they're like you know, this is not to be, working. It's not working. It has to be fixed, you know. And luckily, we have the opportunity to fix that. And yeah, it's, it's important. It's important. Hmm. All right. So, so saliva's well, mixed, saliva exchange, is it safe? Well, I will say so far it's, it's not caused any issues as long as <laughs> it's within a certain range because definitely there's bacteria, millions of bacteria in our mouth millions of bacteria on this side, you know, as long as the bacteria are friendly to each other, right? And of course, we have regular routines where we don't keep the bacteria. Time is a factor. Whatever you bring into mm -hmm. your mouth, into the space, if you don't keep it there for longer because you're having your routine hygiene, we're back to zero, right? So let's make sure that so we So touch more on oral sex. Wait I to... wait, you come. <laughs> Let us finish that. We have to finish that. Guys, you didn't second. tell me we were going to go deep. <laughs> if we have to go deep, oh. <laughs> we're talking all health day. People do right. things and they just right. think, oh, I'm in love. So touch a little bit on oral sex. How safe is it? All right. So we definitely will say that it's something that is not encouraged because they are two different. Remember, we talk about bacteria from the mouth, bacteria from the mouth. Okay. 
we know each other, hello, you know. But if it's a different That's space, a different bacteria. it's different bacteria. Yes, sir. All right, so this is what we have to say here is that, yes, and we talk about oral cancer, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to bring anything that would disturb, disturb the flora of the mouth, right, by bringing some foreign, you know, body there. But again, there is also the time factor. Whatever comes in, just like what you eat, don't keep it long if you don't brush, if you don't clean, you know. So just remember to have that routine, uh, you know, as soon as possible. Okay. So I, I hope I've answered your you question have. without at the same time. <laughs> yes, yes. We could talk about piercing, well, can piercing, I ask one you know. Question? Yes. Ha, wait. Glory wants to ask a question, but keep it short because we have like two minutes to go. Go ahead. So I want to yeah, find very, out. very, very short. Oh, yeah. So hold on. Go okay. ahead. Um, um, there is this saying that people with gap tooth are more prone to having um, dental issues because especially when you eat, you have things stuck in there. When come, that's why most people like are probably going a lot for braces. braces. Fantastic. How true is that? Well, I will say, well, gap tooth already there's a social aspect, you know, so people like it, some people don't like it. It depends on where the gap is, okay? So I'm an orthodontist and I've been doing this for how many years now? 22 years. And I can tell you that uh, it, it's something that we take care of every day, right? By closing the gaps. And of course, if it's in front, aesthetically pleasing, culturally, uh, cul culturally, culturally. accepted, you know, good for you. But if it's something that is no longer accepted, accepted, we can close the gap, okay? But really, if you're having a gap now because you've missed a tooth, that's something else, all right? And that has to be replaced. And you know that technology has come to make dentistry so affordable, and beautiful, so fun, and, you know, so predictable, Absolutely. right? So, yes. Oh, yeah, Noma, quickly. All right, so just about rinsing, rinsing of the mouth. Is it, um, I mean, is it, should people rinse their mouth after brushing or is there anything wrong with not rinsing? Because I'm always on my daughter's case, like, have you rinsed your mouth? She's just brushing and, then, and she's done. I'm like, but you haven't rinsed your mouth. So is there a problem so that that will satisfy my own conscience today? All right, thank <laughs> is you very much for that. with rinsing the mouth? Yeah. All right, Nyama. Actually, actually, your daughter might be right, okay? Because in the, in the toothpaste that we have, especially for children, we have fluoride. And then the fluoride that we have, and sometimes they don't brush for the time that we want. So if she doesn't, uh, you know, she will spit out, she doesn't rinse, actually we keep the fluoride much longer around the teeth. And that may even help her even more. So I've had pediatrician, I mean, dental, pediatric dentists telling their patient, brush, and do not rinse, mm. okay? So I, I, I will say nothing to worry about, you know. Mm. So we just swallow a bit more of the toothpaste as well. We sometimes they do when we're not watching. <laughs> wow. Okay, no more. you have a comment quickly. <clears throat> oh, okay. Let me see. Sorry. Wow. Um, trying to find it. All oh, right. Okay, so I have a comment here. It says, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. How can we take care of our oral health? Simple. We need to brush well and frequently, if possible, twice a day. The use of mouthwash is very important to maintain mm. a fresh breath. Visiting the dentist is also important. When brushing, we must not ignore the tongue. It is a very important part of the mouth. Sister Uwa, I must confess, today you look beautiful, lovely, and good. Good looking. Mr. Sally is blessed to have you. My name is Daniel Ilo. Hashtag wave your regular fan. Thank you, Daniel. But quickly, so, mouthwash, because you touched on it a bit. Is it safe? Because I've seen a lot of videos that talk about mouthwash, how they are not safe. Then there's a particular pH to look out for, even though if you want to use mouthwash. Yes. Quickly. So the mouthwash if, is... Really even for right to paste. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, there are varieties of, of mouthwashes out there. You know, I will always say my favorite is what? Warm salted water. Just half a glass of, of warm water with a teaspoon done. That does the work, okay? Wow. Now, avoid using Listerine. Did yeah. I mention a, 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 a <laughs> product name? Avoid using mouthwashes that have alcohol because I have some patients who come and say, I use this particular you brand to be and I use it every day. Mm -hmm. I'm like, come on, remember that flora. There's a reason why 
this was made, you know, you're killing the balance of the So of the best mouth. mouthwash, half a glass of warm water, a tablespoon of, or a teaspoon of salt, yes. and just gargle. But your dentist can recommend. There are several, but your dentist will let you know the one, one. you should use. But avoid the we ones have that to have bring your alcohol. <laughs> avoid the ones that have so much alcohol. Thank so you glad so to be much, here. Dr. Amy. So glad, so glad Thank you, here. everyone. Thank you, um, Norma. Thank you, Glory. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us on Instagram. When you see my teeth next time... <laughs> Follow us across all social media handles at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, or more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like and share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Every tooth in a man's head is more valuable than diamond. They hear? So treat it with care. Visit Dr. Amy. She'll take good care of you. See you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.